the hypothetical edit form. So, uh, assuming that the comments array is properly populated, it's going to be an array, of course, so I'm going to use a for each to cycle through it. So what I'm going to do at this point is add the edit URL to the comment. So what's happening is that I'm getting the actual comment array using this, this setter method here. And now I need the user to be able to edit that comment. So when I use the getter comments method, I want to edit this comments array so that not only does it have the comment but also the URL to edit it. So here I'm cycling through it and for each comment I am concatenating an href link that will point me to the edit hypothetical edit uh, comment controller. Now, because this is not a part of the view, I don't have the access to the URL view helper. So what I will do later is pass the current URL that the user is at into the parameter so that this method knows which URL is the user at. And now my controller is going to have an ID for the comment so that it would know what comment to edit. Edit, close the tag. Okay, so what this will do is create an edit link for each comment for all users. So even if the user hasn't created a comment, it's still going to be shown up and because we haven't applied the assertions yet. So once again, we use the setter methods to populate all our properties of the book object and then we are getting them as necessary while the comments mean a special one we cycle through each of the comment pulled from the database and we are appending the edit url link at the end unfortunately we cannot see the result of this until we create another model that will do the actual book fetching from the database. Uh, before I do that, I must remember to create a return for that method. So next I'm going to modify my uh, list books model and I'm going to make it do a little bit more than just fetching the row from the database and putting it into the Zen paginator. So as a recap, all we're doing is creating an instance of the DB uh, row select and we're passing that onto the paginator which is now in the controller and then it creates an array which is then passed to the view. Well, we don't want that anymore because now we want a full book object. So I'm going to move the code that uh, does the book array population from the controller and moving it over to the model. Uh, of course, the paginator now takes a different variable for its parameter, which is uh, the select books, which needs to be 
the DB select instance. Uh, next it needs to know the page number and it can get that from the method parameter. So we're going to put that there. We're going to move this back into the controller and put this as the parameter for list books method. That way the controller tells the list books model where the current position in the paginator is. Um, now because I'm going to be using paginator in more than one method, I will want to make it a private property of the object. So I'm just updating my variable names. Uh, this way I am able to use the paginator in more than one method when I need to. And now for the interesting part. We are going to cycle through the paginator output and create an object for each of the books. So uh, that's going to be in our uh, book object array, I mean variable. And we are going to keep track of all the book objects inside of this books array. So before that we had a multidimensional array um, that each book was a key and then information about the book was um, a second dimension of that array. And now it's a single dimensional array and each value is going to be the book object instead. Uh, so we are creating the book object based on library model uh, book that we created uh, earlier here. And the ID that it is going to take, which is the book ID that is uh, this property here set by the construct uh, is of course coming from the uh, book ID from the database. So essentially uh, we get a book ID and we are putting it inside of the construct method so that the book property is filled in. Uh, so that's basically it for the uh, rest of the properties. We're going to add a title, which is book title, uh, going to uh, author, which comes from book author, and of course these are all our setter methods that we created. And end comments is the tricky bit. Um, we want to select the comments based from a completely different table. Uh, right now we are cycling through the paginator output which originates from the books table. And uh, now we want to link uh, the users and books inside of the book comments. Uh, so because this is a completely separate operation, the getting of comments, uh, I'm going to create a separate private method for it called getComments. And it's going to have a parameter for book ID. And of course it's going to return the comment at that point. Uh, so I'm going to uh, prepare that right here. This get comments and ID is going to come from the same book ID. So it's going so this method is going to get the comments for the book 
based on the ID.